Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, July 24th. 2024. So taking a look at the entire Atlantic Basin as a whole here for this afternoon from Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. And as we can see here over the Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Southwestern Atlantic, tropics look very quiet right now. We have a lot of dust, Saharan air coming off of Africa. That's warm, dry air aloft, overlapping moist air at the surface, and that's what's giving us our nimbostratus clouds. But guess what? There is a big tropical wave coming off of Africa, or about to, in the next day or so. We can see at the last few frames there, lots of deep convection coming off. You can see that white uh, kind of patch. That's that tropical wave that will be doing this. And then the European model thinks that there could be the potential for significant tropical development in this area. Boy, my pen's kind of going away here quickly. In that area of the Caribbean, the Bahamas, the Southwestern Atlantic, but the GFS and the Canadians, just a heads up, are not showing anything just yet. So it is very worth noting that the European now for the third model run in a row has been showing something over here, whereas the GFS has not been agreeing on that scenario. But in the meantime, the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center does indicate that the tropics will remain quiet for the next seven days so that's for the next week or so nothing to worry about but like i said i won't be surprised if they start highlighting an area out here within the next three or four days as the european model remains consistent at showing tropical development here and i'll show you the ensembles and the operational deterministic forecast showing us that there could be a tropical depression or storm over here near the bahamas and there is evidence to back that up but on the other hand the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook also shows that there's a lot of activity going on in the eastern pacific we have an area right here that has an 80 to 90 percent chance of tropical development in fact this could become our next name storm in the east pack after having a bit of a slumber for a while here uh, seeing record low activity we also have another area to watch over here but that has a 10 to 30 percent chance of tropical formation in the next seven days so all in all technically no name storms yet in the eastern pacific we'll see if this area tries to get consolidated enough to where the HC can actually make advisories on this but in the meantime looking pretty quiet overall so with that being said here's a look at our latest tropical weather forecast here on the European deterministic forecast this is a three plot map here showing us again those heights those are the black lines our color shading is the vorticity how much spin there is and these wind barbs indicate which way the wind is coming from and the strength of the wind as well so we have winds that are doing this right now around this high pressure system but the thing that we're looking for is a tight bundling of vorticity that's the color shade we want to see reds dark red colors indicating that there's a lot of vorticity a lot of spin in the lower parts of the atmosphere which by the way this is at 5,000 feet so of course this is the free version of the european model a more better visualization versus looking at uh, weather bell because weather bell you know just the way they have their maps laid out makes it a little hard to see different uh, features so this is the free version the actual version of the european is still behind and that's part of you know having it free um you got to look at the fast on here on tropical tidbits so this is uh 24 hour increments so this is day intervals so this is for tomorrow morning july the 25th and we can see um this is our area right in here actually it's more right over here so that's that area of vorticity while it doesn't look like a whole lot believe me once it gets over here it will be easy to pick out as we go into day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, you can see by day six, that's what our vorticity looks like. That's our wave envelope. And take note, when you have a wave in this configuration where it's kind of tilted like that, these systems tend to spin up pretty nicely. And we have this ridge that is far enough to the north to where we are not too concerned that this system is going to kind of get disheveled or it's gonna 
just fall apart, right? There's not a, not as much drier air uh, to the north or within the system envelope to prevent any tropical development, right? So this is, um, that's day six, day seven, day eight. And really look at how it really takes shape here. And let me kind of zoom in here a little bit so you all can see that. Pretty interesting stuff when we look at this. And this is by August 1st, by the way. And then this is August 2nd. And then really, look at this. It really takes shape by August 3rd, Saturday morning. I know this is 10 days out, folks. I am aware of that. But there's been some consistency amongst the European deterministic forecast. And we can see where the vorticity is. That, my guys, is what we look for on the vorticity map signature at 5,000 feet. These redder colors indicate more spin in the atmosphere, while the yellow colors indicate lesser spin. So now let's look back at a couple of previous model runs, right? Because that's my job. So the 0Z zero -Z run from last night showed this. Still there, weaker because it moves over land. You can see how it just moves over land. And it's not able to kind of get organized very well, kind of a, 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 a Laura situation in, indeed, moving over to the Dominican Republic here. And then look at this. Let's go to the 12Z run from yesterday. The 12Z run had it almost in the same spot like the run today, but weaker, not the vorticity signature, not as prevalent, not as um, intense as what we have today. And then let's look at the 0Z zero zero run from the time before that. Of course, nothing. So this is the third run in a row. Yesterday's run, yet last night's run, a little further back this time. And then today's run, actually even more further back at the same time. So it's going to be interesting to see if this actually does develop. And this would be for August 3rd. So for us, or for you all living in the Bahamas, even in the Caribbean, just kind of stay up to date here on the YouTube channel for latest updates on this situation. We're not saying it's going to develop at all. I'm not saying it will develop or it won't develop, but it's something to talk about because it's the one and only model run that has this system. So um, that's what we have to kind of cover. Now, looking at the GFS model forecast, um, definitely a different scenario here and showing nothing. However, it, it really likes this system to briefly spin up, but it won't be likely tropical-like. It would be kind of a subtropical-like system or probably an extra tropical because you have these fronts. You got the warm front up here. You have the cold front attached to it. The, the DNA is different um, than what you'd see in the deep tropics. And then going forward here, all the way through the next 10 days, the GFS continues to not, not indicate or continues to indicate that there won't be anything in the Atlantic, which is very surprising. The GFS is like, nope, I'm not going to develop into any, uh, not going to have anything develop in the Atlantic. And even perhaps through the ninth day of August, looking dead out there. In fact, this is a very stable pattern out here, perhaps a lot of Saharan dust coming off of Africa. So another way we could visualize this is by looking at our European ensemble forecast. There's 51 different members that run the ensemble to make up the control run and the deterministic forecast. So what we see here is there are a few members. There's more members in today's guidance that do indicate that there could be some development out here. Very weak indeed here by your numbers. These values, 1,010 to 1,013, 1,014 millibars. So not a big deal yet. This is day six. Let's go to day seven, and there's more clusters here on the ensemble indicating that, well, there is going to be some sort of a system that exists here, a tropical wave most likely, not a tropical depression. And then this is day seven, no wait, day eight, we can see a lot more members in today's guidance really indicating to me that there could be a tropical wave and going further down the road you can see just a lot of these uh, models indicating 
possibly a tropical depression. And some of these green tracks here, tropical storm, maybe one or two of these members indicating a strong tropical storm or if not a low grade hurricane. So yeah, there is a lot of agreement here or a lot of uh, member cluster analysis here indicating to me that there could be some development lurking out there by the 1st through the 4th of August, especially for the southwestern Atlantic and perhaps over the northernmost portion of the Caribbean. You all need to keep an eye on this here on the YouTube channel for latest updates. Another tool that I wanted to show you all is the chances of tr a tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane here on the European Ensemble forecast. And what we have here, there is certainly a 50% chance now in this little area, a 50% chance that a tropical depression is possible in this area. So Puerto Rico, the US, British Virgin Islands, if you're up here in Antigua, if you're up here in the Northern Windward Islands, yeah, you definitely need to be paying close attention to this as more model runs come out as we get a better idea of if this is actually uh, gonna exist. Now, our chances of a tropical storm have increased today. There's now a non-zero chance. That is this little area right here in the darkest blue colors. That's a 10 to almost 20% chance of a tropical storm developing within this area in the next 10 days. And again, that would include the southeastern Bahamas, the northern Dominican Republic, as well as just to the north of, say, Puerto Rico. So yeah, if we see a 10% chance here on the European Ensemble that tells you something that we cannot take our eyes off of this right now where they're starting we're starting to get more information in as it comes in from the uh, the modeling forecasting on the tropics and what we have today is that the chances have increased for early August for tropical development in this region. And I'll tell you what, people that work at the Climate Prediction Center and do these global tropical hazardous outlooks are acing it this go around. Look at the chances here. There's a low to medium chance for tropical development in this area. And that's what we are seeing here on the European model. So there is plenty of evidence to back this up right now. This is not for hype. This is not fear mongering that there is a possibility by early August. Yes, only early, early August. Climatology speaking, we're not supposed to have this this name storm by early August. We usually see that by mid to late August. And yeah, we're ahead of the game already as far as tropical development. So yeah, certainly we gotta pay close attention to this because the, cl the Climate Prediction Center indicates it, the European Ensemble and the determinist Deterministic, if I can say it right, also indicate it. Now from the Ensemble forecasting on this tropical wave that we're monitoring for early August, Take a look at the sea surface temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico. They continue to warm up ever so slightly. We're now breaching 32 degrees Celsius right off the coast of Tampa Bay, Florida. That is insane. That is really, really warm for late July standards. And we're even getting close here. Well, this is 31 Celsius all through here. 30 Celsius, that is about 87, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So water temperatures really are warm. And now pretty much the entire Gulf of Mexico is at least almost 30 degrees Celsius or warmer of the exception down here where it's about 28 degrees, 27 Celsius, but that is more than warm enough to support intense hurricanes. So that's why this tropical wave, we really, really have to monitor it because if this gets into the Gulf, it could really be trouble ahead for a lot of anyone that lives in the Gulf here of say the coast of Florida, uh, say like Key West and up here in the Big Bend. Yeah, I mean, gosh, these waters are really, really warm. Hot tub warm. I got a couple of viewers saying just how warm those waters were yesterday. And so, yeah, this puts it into perspective just how warm they are right now. And they are going to continue to warm up because we have very little in the way of wind. So that means the sea surface temperatures are going to only warm up even further because our sun angle is high enough. So looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly, very warm in the deep tropics. So again, this tropical wave coming off of Africa, 
has some potential of developing pretty quickly once it gets over here into the western southwestern Atlantic and again for the western or eastern Gulf of Mexico water temperatures there are almost two and a half degrees Celsius above the long-term average that's getting that's pretty concerning and yeah pretty much the entire Gulf now is running above average and looking at our actual sea surface temperatures here on cyclonicwx.com, we can see very warm down here. And then, of course, right up here in the northeastern, eastern quadrant of the Gulf, water temperatures are 31, 32 degrees Celsius. Some other agencies that inter, um, extrapolate this indicate there's even a patch of water here along the Tampa Bay coast that is reaching almost 33 degrees Celsius. So that's the low 90s in Fahrenheit water temperature for you, just FYI. And yeah, it's it's trouble ahead, unfortunately. And we have to be ready for this. And that's why here on the YouTube channel, we are ready. We're ready to go for the live streaming coverage. And I might make a special video on that um, in the next couple of days. Now, before I do end the video, folks, I do have some important information to share with you all. Of course, that this is a forecast, not an actual like, oh, it's going to happen kind of thing. So please stay up to date here on the YouTube channel for latest tropical weather outlook and discussion. Because of this, we will be making a video every single day on this. And if it becomes a high enough threat, we're going to probably start making live detailed discussions on this system. But for right now, it's only a low chance for the time being this far out in time. But it is worth watching, folks. You all living over here, definitely do not take your eyes off the models. Go to Tropical Tidbits, Weatherbell, or weathernerds.org for more information on this. Or simply visit the National Hurricane Center because they are the experts at all of this. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, please consider subscribing. Please subscribe, folks. We're getting closer to 30,000 subscribers. Hit the like button. You guys did really well yesterday. We are almost at 300 likes in yesterday's video. So please like if you haven't already and also ring the bell notification icon so you get all my updates here as I upload every single day on this system. And also not only that, leave a comment in the section below this video. But until next time, I will be back with another detailed update tomorrow on this system.